Hey Resolve, thanks for joining us for part six of our Philippians summer series. We have loved going through this book together and if you've missed any of the previous videos, go back and watch them because it's really going to set you up for what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully you're going through this with somebody else. So pause it, send them the link, watch this with somebody. Um, but we're going to dive right into chapter three of Philippians today. And again, Paul has a crazy story, wasn't a Christian, used to uh, kill Christians, met Jesus, followed after Jesus, becomes a church planter. And now he's writing this letter um, to one of the churches that he leads to his Christian friends. And uh, he hits on a really interesting topic today. We're going to get, again, be in chapter 3, verses 4 through 14, if you want to follow along. Chapter 3, verses 4 through 14. And here's what he writes. He says, If someone else thinks that they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death. And so somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained all this, or have I arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. So what's happening culturally at this time is there's a, a group of Jewish people and they've been following the law, these rules for how to follow after God for a long time. And they've gotten really good at it. In fact, they're really like your religious people, people who have it all together, who are doing it really well. And then there's these new Gentile groups, these Christians who are following after Jesus, but they weren't raised in all of these rules and laws. And so what began to happen culturally is the Jewish people began to look down on the Gentiles. They began to treat them like they were less than, like they weren't as important because they didn't have it all together. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I see that still in our world today. That there are going to be some people, some groups even, who look down on others because they don't quite have it all together. Maybe you've seen this in your schools, in your hallways, or in your sports teams. Um, maybe you kind of feel like you fit in one of these camps. Maybe you have a group who's looking down on you and, and you don't feel like you're good enough. Or maybe, if you were to be honest, you've looked down on other people in your life and you've sort of felt better than them in some way. What Paul's doing in this moment is that he's addressing both groups because he looks to the Jews who think they have it all together and he puts them to shame. He says, hey, I was the best of Jews. I was the best at keeping the rules. He lists out his resume of all the great things that he's done. He says, honestly, I have the most to boast about. He goes, but the thing is, it's not about what I've done. It's about what Jesus has done. And in one small chapter, he allows the, the Jews to realize that it's not about what they've done, but he's also speaking to those who don't feel that they're good enough. And he's reminding them of all that Jesus has done for them. They don't have to be looked down on. They don't have to feel shame because of their past. They don't have to feel like they aren't good enough or that they don't have worth or value. And so I want to ask that maybe Paul's writing to us and which side do you tend to fall on? Do you tend to feel like I've kind of got it all together and maybe other people need to step up to my level? Because the truth is everything that you can do doesn't amount to anything because it's all about what Jesus has done and that our works mean nothing, and it's about Him. And maybe for you, you need to find some humility in realizing that there are some other people who you can actually learn from, and there are some other people who can help you grow in your relationship with Christ, even if, if you don't see them that way. 
but maybe you fall on the other side and, and you've been struggling to feel like you have value, to feel like you have worth. And can you just let these words from Paul soak in that, that he, Jesus has erased all of that. It's not about your, your works or your perfection, but he's given you his perfection. And that in Christ, you have a solid identity that no one can take away from you. You are a child of God, loved and cherished. And you should feel like you are on the same platform with everyone else. This is what Jesus has done for all of us. And so I just want us to wrestle with this today of what would it look like for all of us, no matter where you fall, to kind of realize it's not about me. It's not about my works. It's not about my accomplishments. But it's all about Jesus. And what would it look like for us to be able to just rest in our true identity and to walk about what he says in us? What would that look like for us? So there's some questions below. I'd love for you to walk through those with someone else and really just sit on that. We're so excited that you're watching these and we'll catch up next week. We can't wait.